Hello, welcome to another episode of Forgotten Cemeteries of Pacific Northwest. Today we're at Bethany Pioneer Cemetery. It's located in Portland. A better location would be North Bethany, also known as West Union. That's kind of what I was getting from looking on Google Maps. Located in uh, Washington County. Don't confuse this with Bethany Pioneer Cemetery in Silverton, because when you look it up, two of them come up. Alternative names of the cemetery include Bethany Bible Church, Bethany German Methodist, Bethany Methodist Church. So let's go meet some of the local residents and hear their story. A little bit about the history of this cemetery. It was established in 1894. It's estimated to be about 25 to 100 burials per the Oregon Burial Site Guide. Uh, find a grave shown around 87 memorials so far. It's just a little over two acres big. Uh, it's a pretty small cemetery overall. Overall, not much info in this cemetery as far as individuals. Uh, a little late on arrivals, maybe that's why. There's Swiss immigrants for the most part. Saw some Russians, Germany, and um, there's supposed to be an Aussie buried here, but it, it was mislabeled, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's a common issue with Vina Grave. Here we have Christian Luth, I think is how you say it. He was born in 1831 came across a tragic story of his daughter, Anna Luth Eschman, who is not buried here. She's buried at Lincoln Memorial Park in uh, Portland. But she was born in 1885. Not really a pioneer, but one of the few stories at this cemetery. Because like I said, it was, it was a little difficult to find them. So the story goes that Anna and her husband Albert were traveling to their way to um, their war garden by car. I had no clue what a war garden was, but this was directly from a source I found online. It's like a victory garden, also called a war garden, or food gardens for the fence, where um, vegetables, fruits, and herbs gardens were planted at like a private residence or a public park in the United States. Uh, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and Germany during World War I and World War II also did it. In wartime, governments encouraged people to plant victory gardens, not only to supplement their rations, but also to boost morale. They were used along with uh, rationing stamps and cars to reduce pressure on the public food supply. Anyways, on to Anna. Her and her husband were traveling at the reckless fast speed of 12 miles an hour and were approaching uh, train tracks. Reading up back in the day, the electric trains would stop for cars, I guess, and Albert thought the electric train would stop. Um, they referred to the train as a limited. I'm guessing that means it can't just stop on a dime or it couldn't make a stop at a station like Albert thought it would. Realizing the train wasn't stopping, Albert tried one last ditch effort to avoid being hit by the train, which was traveling 35 miles an hour. Uh, the couple's car would be struck and Albert and Anna would be sent flying out of the car a few feet. Albert would sustain injuries that were not life-threatening, so uh, someone was nice enough to post a family picture on the loose um, on Find a Grave. That's Christian the father on the bottom, and way on the right is Anna. She seems pretty petite, so keeping that in mind, she sustained internal injuries and a fractured skull um, from being thrown from the car. Anna would die at the spot of the wreck, apparently. Uh, the car wreck was said to be a total wreckage with pieces scattered more than 100 feet at the right of way. In the early morning sunrise here, lighting up the headstone. So we have Kendall Marshall Barker, was born in 1869 in Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, I believe his family lived in New Hampshire and Massachusetts from my readings in the early 1800s and then went to uh, Nova Scotia. Sadly, his mother died during the voyage from Tacoma to London, England at one time. Um, she would be buried at sea. Speaking of that, did you know there's specific requirements now for being buried at sea? I, I don't know why I read this. Maybe somebody out there <laughs> is interested in it, but I don't know. Part of my channel is wanting to be a little educational at the same time. So the Marine Management Organization specs that the coffin must be made of solid softwood and must not contain any plastic, lead, copper, or zinc. To make sure the coffin sinks quickly to the seabed and does not float around, two-inch holes must be drilled throughout and about. 440 pounds should be clamped to the base. So we learned all about being buried at sea today. <laughs> So our last stop is Christoph Cube, who's not here. There's no memorial and there shouldn't be, but find a grave shows a memorial for him. It's 
kind of an example of what you run into when you do cemetery research uh, from establishment dates to the incorrect birth dates to the wrong spelling of names down to just the wrong individual labeled in the wrong cemetery. So Christoph was born in 1822 in Bethany Barossa Council, South Australia. Um, so I thought we had our first Australian who was buried somewhere out there, but then I realized his entire family was buried at South Australia, which I thought it was odd because it said he died in Australia as well. So why would his body be shipped all the way over to little, uh, little town over here in Oregon? And might I say, when I looked up Barossa Valley, it looks very pretty and epic, uh, picturesque. Known for its vineyards, apparently. What's funny is that when you look up Bethany, Australia on Google Maps, two cemeteries actually come up, Bethany Pioneer and Bethany New Lutheran. Christoph, Christoph is uh, not buried as a cemetery, so there was probably a mix-up with this being Bethany Pioneer Cemetery and someone just accidentally entered it. So just a little example of some of the incorrect information you come across. So just be careful. Don't take find a grave as word of mouth, um, kind of the word of God, I guess you could say. Uh, do, do your research. All right, let's start our little tour. Should be a short one though. Got this cool little entrance when you come in. This is it's let's see Jacob Riser May first eighteen seventy six. Very quiet cemetery, not only for noise wise but information wise. And I think I'm starting to notice like this with the German cemeteries with the immigrants. I don't know if it's because they're late arrivals. I'm just not sure, but a little, little bit of story. I wish I could find more for you guys. Wow, here's an 1821. Would have liked to know her story. Neat. So one side is Barker, and the other side is a different last name. Never seen that before. Sharing a headstone. Maybe they were related somehow. Obviously, a very religious cemetery being that the church is over there and I'll get a screenshot at the end of it. Kruger was a really popular last name in this cemetery, which is obviously very German, I believe. Two little park benches here so again if you need to get away from the world this is a good one to come it's got a nice view of the valley Let's see we've got US Navy World War II we do have some more vets here Patriotic is this? I don't see any military indications on there, but sometimes they don't. I've seen that with the Civil War vets, where there'll be a Civil War vet, but it doesn't indicate it at all. This one's neat. Hopefully, you guys can see this has like a wolf. My wife likes to make fun of the way I say wolf. I think I say it perfectly fine. <laughs> but I am from Ohio. We do pronounce things weird sometimes, incoherently. 
which I'm sure you've noticed in my videos. <laughs> Kid. Here's a good one. Get out of the shot. Looks like they got a windmill on there. Seeing a lot of Bible verses so far. Uh, this looks like a infant's death, maybe, or born, died during childbirth. Not sure. Very epic name, though. Rose Bell, WM Bell. Apparently they have the nicest view. Townsend. That seems like an important last name I've heard before. I don't know why. It's triggering something. I, I wish I could think of it. Got over here. You can see the church in the background probably by now. Henry S. Franz. Died in 1898. I if, if he was in a war in that time. I feel like there was a war around that time. I can't think of it at the top of my head. Is it? Maybe the Spanish American? I don't remember. You can miss every once in a while. Big concrete pad. Kaufman's popular last name too. name as well. Kruger, another Kruger. Yeah, I know I'm curious if that guy died during the Spanish-American War in 1898, because usually the American flag means um, a war vet. I cannot make this out. Maybe it'll show up on the camera later. Chunk. It's a nice cemetery with a lot of cool writings. something on there. There's one big pillar over here. Let's check this one out. Ooh. Looks like it used to have writing. Yeah. Anybody over here? Yeah, something. Catherine Schuhammer. Born in Germany, no kidding. Name wasn't a giveaway. <laughs> so what's on that one? There was Writing was all wore down. Finally, way in the corner, the loose. I think that's how you say it. Talk 
talked about his daughter traveling the high speed of 12 miles an hour back in the day. <laughs> and that is it. Short video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Pretty area too. I recommend this cemetery a lot. It's quiet. Anyways, if you have any other recommendations on cemeteries to visit in the Pacific Northwest, Oregon and Washington more specifically, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and have a great day.